This week on World Traveler Cooking, we're going to try to make the, uh, or try to reconstruct rather, the original Salad Olivia from Moscow in the 1870s. Now, this dish is spread around the world where it's often called some variant of Russian salad or Salad Olivia. Uh, we've already seen the post-Soviet version and we have seen the Iranian version, both of which are similar in some regards and different in others. Um, so today I'm going to try very, very hard to reconstruct what Lucien Olivier may have actually served people at his famous restaurant. Something so delicious that it must have caught the um, imagination of the entire world. Now, at the outset, this is a um, this is uh, on its basis something like an egg and potato salad, but it has many other things in it. And the mayonnaise used for this is going to be a homemade mayonnaise. Um, Olivier was always said to make the sauce himself. And it, he, it was typically called in some cases um, uh, something like provincial dressing. Uh, it's generally believed to be a kind of mayonnaise, but um, nobody is quite sure what's in it. Um, almost certainly, it was a, um, a high quality olive oil based mayonnaise. Um, so it would have been somewhat different than the mayonnaise that we typically put in potato salads today. Um, and it would have almost certainly had red wine vinegar in it also. Uh, beyond that, um, some things here are my speculation, but they are based largely on my understanding of uh, sort of imperial Russian cuisine, high cuisine, if you will. Um, so I'm going to get to the sauce in a moment, but I'm going to go over the fillings first. Uh, we have some capers. I'm just going to use a few of these. Um, black olives. I'm just going to use a few of these. I'm um, going to use one pickle maybe two, probably just one, uh, two potatoes, two eggs, three crayfish tails, crayfish, I guess you could probably use jumbo prawns, but uh, crayfish will be a lot less salty. Um, so going with the pickles and capers and stuff, I guess if you use prawns, maybe you'd want to use uh, lots of those, or maybe use some cucumber instead of some of the pickles. Now, um, the early recipes we see uh, suggest that Olivier was using hazel grouse in the salad too. I can't get that. What I can get are um, quail. So I'm gonna use some of these quail here. Um, I'm gonna use at least one, probably at least two. I'm going to cook four just in case, but we'll see how much we need. And those will be the basis of the, in, uh, of the insides of the salad. Oh, I'll also use a few leaves of lettuce also, uh, which, I'll, which I'll chop up. Um, now, it's worth noting that both uh, that contemporary versions uh, in Russia tend to chop everything very small. Uh, many, um, and the Iranian version uh, shreds the chicken and grates everything through a, you know, a shredder. So... Um, it may be that uh, stuff was cooked, cut very small. I haven't decided how small I'm going to cut everything yet. It'll, I'll, I'll decide that once I get into it. Um, the sauce, however, presents a bunch of extra difficulties. Um, when the, um, when one of uh, Olivier's um, sous chefs uh, was able to see his mise en place, he uh, then took the ingredients and went to open his own restaurant, and everybody said his salad was not as good as uh, Olivier's. Whether that was just status, or whether he was actually missing something, that's a really, really good question. And we don't even know his ingredients, let alone Olivier's. So, um, what we do know is that this is almost certainly an olive oil-based mayonnaise. So we have, we're gonna start off with an egg yolk, and um, given the role that French cuisine played in the development of Imperial Russian cuisine, you see this also with um, stroganoff, um, we're going to be borrowing a lot of things from French cuisine as well. Okay, So, um, mustard in the mayonnaise, definitely. 
probably extra mustard. Um, extra virgin olive oil. Um, I'm going to add a, one or maybe two anchovy fillets. Now that's something you would expect to see in a Caesar salad dressing, but as I found out, uh, anchovy, caper, olive oil pairings are frequent in Provençal cuisine, and consequently, um, I believe that Olivier may have actually used anchovies in his dressing. It's not provable, but it seems very, very possible. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So. Now we've seen this, um, I'm going to go ahead and start by stewing uh, or boiling together the eggs, the quail, and the potatoes. And I'll probably take everything out but the potatoes before I get the potatoes out. So we'll get that start started um, <clears throat> and then uh, we'll turn our attention to the sauce. So I've layered everything in here with the idea that uh, we'll take things out as they're ready. Um, and I'll probably have to add some more water. Um, but uh, while this is starting to boil, let's turn our attention to the sauce. Now, if you haven't seen my mayonnaise video, you should probably watch that before proceeding. So, one egg yolk, two finely chopped anchovy fillets. Um, and I would say at least a good sized teaspoon, maybe more, of like a nice Dijon mustard. Actually this is going to look more like a tablespoon, so that'll be good. And now let's start uh, emulsifying this with the olive oil. So pardon the sound of the cold prayer in the background, this happens. Um, before I add any uh, Olive oil, I am going to take my whisk and I'm just going to mix these ingredients very well together. That just kind of helps maintain everything once I start to add the olive oil. Also note that mustard, like, uh, like egg yolk, is an emulsifier. So I'm just going to add a little bit. And we're going to whip this in carefully. And then we'll add a little more and so forth, and eventually this will start to turn light. So now as the texture gets to be closer to what we'd like, we'll season this with a bit of salt. A bit of pepper. And then once we stir that in, we will add our vinegar. So now, stirring in vinegar a bit at a time, or just whatever we're going to add. And note that this is suddenly going to get a lot more uh, soupy. That's fine. So I'm starting with uh, my lettuce and the um, eggs here. Next I'm going to pick um, an appropriate amount of the quail meat off and I'll put that in and then I'll go in the crayfish, uh, probably the aspect after that and finally the potatoes. So I decided to go with the shrimp, uh, no, sorry, the um, crayfish first. This little bit here are the crayfish tails so I am cutting everything relatively finely. Next I'm going to pick all the meat off of maybe a couple of these uh, um, quail and then we'll add the aspic and stuff. So here we have um, the quail, we have a uh, pickle, uh, six olives, about three teaspo heaping teaspoons of capers. Um, you might be able to do a peeping tablespoon, but I think three heaping teaspoons is a little more, so maybe two tablespoons. Um, some um, uh, aspic here, and now I'm going to add the potatoes and the dressing and we'll stir it up. So I've added the potatoes there, and now I'm going to add uh, a few nice big spoonfuls of sauce and 
and let's stir it up and see if we need more songs. And the way I've done this sauce, it should be kind of similar um, to somewhere in between a mayonnaise and a Caesar dressing. Um, yeah, this is going to need a lot more sauce. And here is my attempt at um, recreating Lucien Olivier's famous salad. Next up, the taste test. And now for the taste test. Just looking at this, I can see the sauce would be better to be less runny, so more oil and maybe add vinegar before I mix in the mayonnaise uh, dressing next time. Now I'm going to taste it. Wow. This salad is a symphony of flavors. Um, it's truly amazing. I don't know how to describe it. Um, my first bite was like capers and pickles. My second bite was crayfish and egg. Um, all really merged together very well with this very nice dressing. Uh, the dressing, I think, is um, something which just brings out the brightness of all these flavors. Now, if you find this content useful or interesting, please like, uh, comment, share, subscribe. That always helps this channel grow. Um, I have below a list of places you can find and uh, support my work. On top of that, um, I always put the recipe in the description. So, bon appetit and see you next week.